Greenfoot is a program for learning about object oriented programming through Java. So, just what is object oriented programming? Well, in OOP, we create templates for our code called classes. That explains how a certain object will be built. We need to make sure that the class keeps its own properties and methods with it. In this example, our class is actor and it has the properties of name and image. And these are just variables. They're items of data that are stored for each actor. Now this data is usually only visible to the class itself. It also has the methods of act and set name, which are subroutines or functions which can be visible from outside the class and are usually used for manipulating the properties. Why is all that important? Well, we want the classes to be in control of their own data. If the properties are private, then no other object can have control of that data, making it more consistent and more secure. The classes can be inherited from too. That makes it very interesting. Here we have a subclass which is inheriting all of the properties and methods from the superclass. This allows us to take a basic template and extend it, getting all of the templating options from the original and adding or changing to it as we need to. In this example, if I make a subclass of actor called pirate, then I can define the properties unique to the pirate as well as the methods. But I will also have the properties and methods of the actor for free. When the computer creates the pirate, it has all of the properties of both and the methods of both, making it really easy to define templates that are just a little bit different to the basic class. Let's take a look at what this looks like in Greenfoot. Our world class is the background to the entire program, and within that we have three other subclasses. In this case, they all inherit from actor. These are counter, pirate, and treasure. Each of these have their own methods and properties. If the pirate wants to increase the value of the treasure in code, we could attempt this by telling the treasure to just add one to its value. That seems sensible, but because the value is only accessible to the treasure itself, then our attempt to get the pirate to change it will not work. Now this is great for the treasure because the only way to change its value is from its own methods. However, if we try and get the pirate to increase the counter, we would get refused if we tried to change the property directly, exactly the same as when we tried to change the property of the treasure. But luckily for us, the counter has a public method called increase, so we'll try and use that. The method's public, so it will allow the pirate subclass to use it and the method itself is just changing the total count property, but because it's doing it to itself, it will be allowed to change it. Let's see if we can apply that knowledge now to the Greenfoot interface. Here's our main window. You'll see on the right, we have an area that will show the world classes. A superclass there already exists called world. Here, that's a template for what a world should work like. If we want to create a subclass, then we can right click on the superclass and we'll get the option to do so. Now you'll notice that the subclass has the same arrow of inheritance that we had in our class diagrams earlier. It now has all of the properties and methods of the world. And by double clicking on the subclass, we can add in properties and methods for the island itself. Down below, you'll see the list of actor subclasses. Sitting there ready for us is the superclass actor. In order to create the subclasses, you would right click on the superclass to get the menu up. Again, once you've created a subclass, you'll inherit all of the properties and methods from actor, but will be able to add your own by double clicking on the subclass. The compile button at the bottom checks all of the code is valid and creates something called bytecode, which is executable code that will be run when we click, shockingly, the run button. Speaking of the run button, it starts the game running. It does this by running the act methods of each of the classes once per frame of the game. Now we can control the speed of the game or the amount of frames per second by adjusting this slider. The speed slider, if it's dragged to the right, will speed it up. And if it's dragged to the left, will slow it down. Now you always want to make sure it's running at a reasonable speed, not just for your own sanity, 
but also because it's usually part of the mark scheme itself. This big chunk of nothing here is the stage. This is where your world and the actors will go when you build a working game, but it's a little bit empty at the moment. This is the code editing window. You will see it a lot. It will show you the Java code for the subclass that you've just double clicked on. In this case, we're looking at the code for a subclass called Island. And as you see there, it says it extends world, which means it inherits from the world superclass. Now it does try to do some nice visualizations on the different blocks of code. It adds colored blocks over different logical sections to make it make a bit more sense to you as you're reading it. One top tip that I've got for you though is to make sure that your green box always closes at the last curly brace. Otherwise, you've got too many or too few. The pairs should always match up. We have another compile button up here, which checks that this class works correctly. Any warning messages or errors will appear in the bar down below, and Greenfoot is pretty good at giving you useful error messages. So that's it for our introduction to the concepts of object-orientated programming and to Greenfoot itself. Why don't we get cracking with actually making something? <laughs>